Hello, I'm Pastor Paul. Welcome to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. We're glad you're here. We know that you can't always be in worship with us, so we're glad to provide the sermons from our weekly services. We hope that you will find hope and inspiration as we have in Jesus Christ. And now, here's this week's message. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 16th chapter. There was a man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy, satisfy his hunger with what, what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convicted, convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. A quick aside, in the reading uh, for the epistle reading today, there was that line that we often misquote. Did you hear it? We normally say money is the root of all evil, but we're told in Scripture, and where that quote comes from is, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, right? Just one, that's the bonus. I could step away now, but I won't. Will people ever learn? Do you ever ask that question? I hope so. I want to think so. Anyone here ever made a bad choice? Anyone here have any regrets from your past? Anyone have a regret from past week? Yesterday? This morning? I make a selfish choice and I harm someone I love. Regret. I make a choice to do something the easy way, and I pay for it with all kinds of additional time later on as I try to fix the problem. Regret. Regrets can haunt us, and they can, if we aren't careful, lead us into making further poor choices. Anybody ever been there? Or they can teach us something, help us move on. Today's reading from the Gospel of Luke gives us a glimpse into what regret can look like when it comes to faith. This is the only parable of Jesus where he gives a name to one of the people, Lazarus, which in Hebrew is Elazar, which means God has helped. It's on purpose, I think. This central figure of the parable is left utterly unhelped in life, so much so that his only hope is in God. By contrast, the rich man in the story, unnamed, has everything in life, but is left in eternity with regret. Chris Arnade is a well-known photographer and essayist. Chris tells the story of his 16-year-old self. I was an outsider, he says, a 16-year-old working on a summer custodial crew for a local college, saving money to pay for my escape from my hometown. Anybody 
buy into that. The other employees, close to three dozen, were working to feed themselves, to feed their kids, to pay child support, to pay for the basics of life. I was the only white. Everyone else was African American. Preacher Man, who was one of the characters in his essay, tried to get me to join the prayer meetings, asking me almost daily, and I declined, preferring to spend those small work breaks with co-workers, maybe getting a drink. Preacher Man would question me, he says, What do you believe in? I would decline to engage out of politeness. He pressed me, and finally I broke. I'm an atheist, he said. I don't believe in God. I don't think the world is only 5,000 years old. I don't think Cain and Abel married their sisters. There. Arne goes on to explain that after successfully escaping his hometown, he received his Ph.D. in physics and then spent 20 years working on Wall Street, doing quite well for himself, where with enough money, any problem can be solved or fixed. He did well, and he decided to change his career path to one of his hobbies. He used photography to go onto the streets of the Bronx and capture images of the people there. The book he created is filled with photos capturing the humanity of prostitutes, drug addicts, and the homeless. He goes on to explain that through his experience in meeting and hanging out with these people, the subjects of his book, he learned that they are some of the most faithful people he's ever met. These modern-day embodiments of Lazarus are so destitute and poor that they have learned to rely on God for help. The middle-aged, self-proclaimed atheist learned that the only place where these people found help and acceptance was in the church, through people of faith who didn't judge them, but showed mercy, gave them something to eat, and invited them to pray. And so they did. Regardless of what other regrets they carried with them, they prayed. They clung to crosses in their pockets, and they clung to rosaries in their hands, and some even carried a framed photo of that famous painting of Jesus and the Last Supper, and they would lean it up against the wall of whatever place they were in, against a bridge abutment when he found them, under the bridge where they slept. Our knaves regret his arrogance as a 16-year-old, and his lack of understanding about life. Life where he thought every problem could be fixed with money or outwitting others. There's also been another story unfolding over the past couple of weeks about a young man who likes beer. Have you heard this story? According to BuzzFeed, one of the online news sources that I look at, on September 14th, at the Iowa State University, Iowa State fans, Mm. versus University of Iowa. Okay, that's marginal at best. Carson King appeared in the background of ESPN's College Game Day. That's a a pre-roll show that goes on for hours before football games and breaks down the stories of all the games, right? King had a sign in the background he held up, and it said... Bush Light Supplies Need Replenished. And then he put an online banking handle on there for a Venmo account so people could send him money to help replenish his beer supply. Now, it seems kind of funny, right? It seems like that's a pretty good joke. It's a pretty good idea. But after he received $600 in donations, he's announced that instead of it being his beer fund, he would donate it to the Stead Family Children's Hospital. And then the rest happened. The fundraiser soon went viral, and then Venmo and Anheuser-Busch offered to match the donations, and as of yesterday, the total donations that I saw were $1.9 million. And King was quickly catapulted into being a local legend and a viral Internet hero. In the days following, a reporter uncovered social media posts from King that dated back to when he was 16 years old, a sophomore in high school. Pay attention, young people. He said he was parroting a popular TV show from cable TV. And quote, in rereading it today, eight years later, I see it was an attempt at humor that was offensive and hurtful. He continued, I am embarrassed and stunned to reflect on what I thought was funny when I was 16 years old. I want to sincerely apologize. 
regret. The beer company parted ways with King immediately, but they're still going to give the money to the children's hospital. A Facebook friend posted the clever comeback of a local brewer who offered to make a beer with his name on it because they wanted to make sure that Carson knew that people grow and evolve and that they saw that. That was kind of cool. Also a great advertising gimmick for them. But enough about beer. I know, for some of you that's probably really disappointing. The point is that we all live with regrets in our lives, don't we? The rich man, in this startling parable, lived without regret or concern for the least of these, the poor and the needy. The rich man instead chose to comfort himself, to solve all his problems with money without a thought for the ones Jesus tells us to love. In this parable, the rich man spends eternity with regret. Having not listened to the prophets or scripture, we have the prophets and the scriptures, and we have the benefit of knowing the story of Jesus, one who was dead and who was raised back to life so that we would understand something the rich man begged for in the parable. These past weeks of parables and teachings from Jesus have been hard because they ask something of us, something that we aren't always comfortable with doing. Jesus asks us to learn something about how we use what we love in service to, in love for, our neighbor. In other words, to use that with which we have been blessed to be a blessing. As I said in the beginning, we can either allow our regrets to cripple us and control us, or we can use what we've learned to move forward and make better decisions. What if our only regrets were that we wished we could do more in service to our neighbor? What if our only regrets were that we wish that we could have loved more those with whom we have relationships, those who are closest to us. Even in our deepest regrets, there is hope. There is hope. Even in our worst failing to love, there remains hope. God surrounds us and embraces us with love and says that we are forgiven. That's the power of love for God's people. That is God's help for God's people. For us, it is only God who can help us. In God's forgiveness, we have hope and strength and the freedom to try again. From everything I've learned and everything that I've read, God has no regrets about loving you. Thanks be to God. Thanks for listening to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church Sermon Podcast. If you're ever in the Dubuque land area, please join us for worship. Visit our website at www.lordoflife.online to learn more about service times and about our vision for serving God and our community. God bless you.